When he's trying to take his father's face, we're going to intercede on Manny's behalf. Keep that ball in the Amen. Young people, I hope, hope you caught I hope you caught the nuggets. Make up, make up in your mind what side you're going to be on. Amen. 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 So don't let nothing slow you down from getting to God and put yourself in position to serve. Amen. It was a good word. This time can we stand? Amen. And receive our bishop as he brings forth the speaker for the hour. Amen. Can we give God praise as he come? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise God. You thank God. Praise God. Brother Manny. Amen. Praise God. Delivering that word. Except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain that builds it. Amen. I don't care what your motive is. If God ain't in it, praise God, you might as well get out of it. Because it won't prosper. But when God is in it, it will prosper the thing that God had called. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We are, we are blessed today. Amen. Praise God on, 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 on this youth day. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. And on today, praise God our home. Praise God as all this month. Praise God. We've been blessed to be, to be flavored by the word of God through others, praise God, from this house, praise God, and today, praise God, and as I sought the Lord, and my wife and I, praise God, as we go to the schedule on this, this month, praise God, and, and Deacon James, praise God, it came to our hearts, praise God, and praise God, you may say, well, this is your son, well, he's younger than me, <laughs> so I think he qualified, amen, for us to do the name of the Lord, praise God, and the last time he came, praise God, and he spoke on Friday, and I was out of town, and I didn't get to, get to hear, but I saw it on uh, the YouTube. Uh, thank you, uh, Brother Amen, Eric, praise God, and, and making that possible and putting us out there in that way. Praise God, but it's a, truly, a, truly a blessing, and I noticed the Brother, praise God, he has spoken many times at a youth, youth uh, 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 conferences. And him and his wife, praise God, and they really, really, really are passionate about a lot of different areas about ministry. <coughs> praise God, so we truly praise God as he come forth. Uh, praise God, and come forth and receive him. Let's all receive him for how the amen. Praise God, say, Lord, send your word. Lord, prepare our hearts to receive your word. Bless the man of God as he bring forth the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 Let's my guest to give you some praise. Amen. Amen. Bible, the Ecclesiastes, the fourth chapter. Fourth chapter, we're going to start at the ninth verse. We're going to read down to the twelfth. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going to start with the word. Because in the beginning, it was the word. Okay. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? In verse 12. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is quickly is not quickly broken. Praise the Lord. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Um, I'm going to try and sing a song. Y'all don't have to be patient with it, brother. Y'all don't have to be patient with it, brother. I'm going to do, I'm going to do, thus say the Lord, and, and the Lord put this song on my heart because it goes well with, with the message. It helps y'all appreciate it. When your way is dark as night, Jesus will bring things out all right, yeah. for he's a friend, I know he is now, under the end. In my Savior, I'll always trust, don't lose your faith and end up in disgust, for he's a friend, 
testimony during the celebration, during the anniversary, celebrating 48 years. I'm only 46 years old. Uh, so 48 years to me is a long time. And me and Mother and, and Minister Mark was out in the parking lot yesterday just, just reminiscing on some of the things that, that have occurred uh, to us, to the church family, to my family while we're um, here now. Um, it was 1983, 1983, and while I don't remember the date, I remember the day we came into the church. Um, we were late. We were late. Service so back then started at 11:30. 11:30. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, it was probably closer to 12. Um, Service so started. We were still late. <laughs> we were still late. It was, it was me, my two brothers, and my mother, my father, and my aunt Alice had invited us to the little church over in Capitol Heights with the tower next to it, uh, the tower next to it. Uh, she spoke highly of Mother Vincent, an apostle, that we would call him bishop, um, spoke highly of him. And um, the church was, was about half the size as it is now, and the pews were wooden, wooden, no cushion, no cushion, no cushion. And, 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 and God bless that we was in church all day back then. We were in church all day, amen. And we pulled into, pulled into the lot, and it was about 12 feet or whatever, and um, back then my father was driving a red van, a red van, and we were, and the people were sitting outside, outside almost to the street. And um, it, was, it was crowded, to say the least. It was crowded, to say the least. It was April, and it was hot up in here. It was hot. So we come, and we, and we, and we parked the van in a, in a lot, the five of us get out the car, 
um, get out the car, we walk over and we stand in the back of the chairs that are outside. And sister, uh, I forget the sister's name. Um, um, she has since passed and gone with the Lord, but she was an usher at the door. And she looked past all the people sitting down and saw us back there and went back there and, and, and went straight to my father and grabbed him and pulled him into, into, into the service. And we, we um, came in and they said we had chairs. was already on both sides of the aisle. They threw some chairs on, on this side right here, down the side, and we sat one, two, three, four, five. Five of us sat right, right on this side. And we put Eric up front. Because we would put him in the back and disappear. Eric was up front, then my mother, then probably Reggie, and then my father, because my father liked to keep an eye on Reggie, and then I sat behind him. And um, I never forget because an apostle got up here and he, and he opened his Bible and he looked over there and saw my father, and before he spoke, he said, I'm going to pray for that man right here. Pray for that man right there. He laid hands on my father, and when I tell you that it changed the, the, the trajectory of an entire family. Lord God. Of an entire family. From, from that moment, it was instant. Instant. So when somebody say it can't be instant, I'm telling you, it absolutely 100% without a doubt can be instantaneous in the most extreme circumstances. Okay? The most extreme circumstances. But I can tell you, that I can tell you that we partied over in, in, in Fort Washington before we came up here. We had a good time. Ask around about us. People drove from New Jersey and North Carolina and out west to come. When Steve James had a party, it was, it was happening. Yeah. Okay, all right. We had a case of Coke 45 in the refrigerator. We had a, a, a gallon, a gallon of vodka out in the van. Go and testify. And a couple packs of cigarettes. God is And good. we had a ball. We really did as a family. We was always close as a family. Um, we was always close as a family. And when we did our dirt, we did our dirt together. Very well. Very well. But, but a family that prays together is a family that prays together. Okay. From that moment, from that moment was a change. There was smoking in the house. There was that, 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 that case of Coke 45 stayed in the refrigerator had to be 18 months, over a year. That same case. Didn't get touched or anything. He said that it wasn't, that it's not in him no more. He went from there. From, from being prayed for that day, we was back in church Sunday, I mean Wednesday, noonday service, and we came in, we sat on the back pew. It was, it was our intention that, you know what, we say we're young, we're going to walk, you know, walk this thing. Mm -hmm. slow talk. How long did that last? 20 minutes tops. <laughs> but we went from being out in, out in the street doing what we do to, to to being engraved in the church. The church, is, the church is who we are. The church is who we are. We may, we may fall away a little bit, we may catch a little, we may, you know, start snoring ourselves, so we start snoring ourselves. But God always brings us back in. You know, God always right. brings us back in. And it's today, I thank God for this ministry. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. My wife is sitting right there looking at me. <laughs> My wife is sitting right there because I am a member of this church. I thank God for this church. <laughs> but Brother Walker, when he came in, um, he, you know, he was in the church for a minute. And Bishop, Apostle, he's coming, he's coming, come, and Sister Lewis, he would teach Sunday school right here. So he teach Sunday school right here. And we would, and me, Eric, me and Reggie, because Eric was a little kid, he was in this group. For me and Reggie and um, Felicia and um, Lane, who Lane? Right here. <laughs> and Lynn and, uh, and other members of the TD Youth Ensemble, we would sit there, especially on the second Sunday, we before they sing. And so then Sister Lewis would be teaching class, and the Apostle would come to the door, he'll open the door, look out there, see me, and say, Tyron. He never said Tyron. I don't know. He couldn't say Tyron to save his life. <laughs> 
So Tyron, come here, I need to talk to you. And I get up and I come over there and I walk in, he tossed me the keys. Talk the keys to that, that sedan that built a Cadillac. And said, go up there, get the car wash, and get me a cup of coffee from Dunkin' Donuts. Right? Get me a car wash, Dunkin' Donuts. And he said, take Walker with you. He ain't doing anything. Take Walker with you. <laughs> so I walk in and I, and I get Bro Walker. I said, Bro Walker, I need to come with me. Bishop said, you need to go and get some coffee and, and um, get a car wash. Now Walker was saying, he, yeah, he wants a small cup of coffee. He said, yeah, a small cup of coffee and three donuts. <laughs> said, okay, hey, that's the man, what that man want. So we go up to um, Dunkin' Donut. Dunkin' Donut. First, it, we have been doing this for a couple um, months or whatever. But this particular time, we go in there and um, she's in there behind the rest. And I looked at her, and, you know, I ain't paying her. Uh, you know, I was there getting coffee and doing it for Bishop. And Walkers looked at her and said, that's going to be your wife. Right? Now, it took 10 years. <laughs> but eventually, we end up getting married. Oh. If Paul had to lay hands on my father here, that never happened. Never happened. Because I'm happy as I want to be. I'm happy as I want to be. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. And that's my testimony. That's, that's, that's my little story about this ministry. But we have been blessed. Blessed. I grew up here. Started in 1983. I learned how to drive here, right there in that parking lot. Um, I got in trouble here, and I got out of trouble here. when I went into. And, and, and this this ministry, this church has been with me personally in every step, every aspect, everything that I've ever done in my life. In my life, when I got when I was inducted into the United States Air Force in 1987. Over here on the mall, we had a ceremony. They, they, they had a ceremony on the mall. We were the, the, they had just opened up the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, the wall, and they, 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 everybody that was inducted into the military for that month, they had a special ceremony right there on the mall, okay? Um, they said, bring your family. Bring your family. You know, we wanted to be a big thing. They had a reception over at Andrews Air Force Base, I was there, and 40 of my closest friends from True Liberal Church of God was there. Um, Minister Allen, remember Minister Allen? Who remember Minister Allen? Drove that white Twinkie bus. <laughs> it said True Liberal Church of God. Drove it right up on the mall. Park police almost, yeah, you know. <laughs> and we went from there in a caravan. Police escort from downtown to Andrews Air Force Base. And let me tell you, I get teared up when I think about the love that has been shown to me here. Here. And I thank God for you all. I do. Thank God for you. So, uh, I have to thank Bishop for allowing me to speak. My pastor, my friend, my mentor. Yeah. Who, who, who has taught me so much in the last few years. It's amazing. This is a powerful one for me. Amen. God. Extremely deserving of the praise and respect that you have for us. Thank God for it. Yeah. And I would defend her, but believe that. Okay? Thank you. Thank God. Mother Vincent. <laughs> I, 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 I cannot say enough about Mother Claire Vincent. Yeah. It's impossible yes, for me yes. to say yeah, all I need to say is about this, this, this woman of God. Let me, I, I will sum it up for you, though. Sum, sum, the, in a nutshell, last year was a rough year for me and my family. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on. But um, on this particular time, Kwansama had been in the hospital. And she had been in the hospital for about two weeks and suffered. 
we'll get to the part about the suffering in a minute. Um, and and the docs had come in and said, you know what, we know what's wrong with her, but you know, at some point, she going it's going to subside and she'll be able to go home. Okay. He said that that around two o'clock that that afternoon. About what Millie at? About six. About six. We look up and Millie and Mother Vincent walks in. And Millie said that Mother wanted to get here today. I said, you mind going in the morning? She said, no, I want to go today. Right now. And Millie was like, well, how can you not take it? So she bring her up to the children's hospital. And we were sitting there. And let me tell you, it wasn't a happy time when they walked in. It, it really wasn't. We were going through some stuff when Mother Vincent and, and Millie walked in there. And Mother came in, and, and the mood in the room changed. It changed. We, 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 we praised the Lord there. And she prayed for my daughter, my little girl, right? Uh-huh. Right? And, and um, Nelson stayed with her that evening. I had to go home and make sure he was to school the next day. Um, by the time I got him out to go to school, when I get to the hospital, she's dressed ready to go. The doctor says she's good. To, man, you go ahead and take her home. She's good. She's good. And, and that's the most amazing thing. Most amazing thing. I'd like to also honor Minister Karan, who is a who, you know, Mr. Karan, Elder Hawkins, who is a mentor, and a teacher, a freshman, and Mr. Margaret. We have this conversation. I love you to death. Any other ministers? Deacons, trustees, all the soldiers of God in the house this evening, Deacon Smith. You don't talk to me. I love you. I honor you all today. Thank you for being who you Praise are. God. Praise the Lord for this church. Praise yes. the Lord for this church. Thank you. Right. Now, she didn't stand up when, 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 when co pastor asked for visitors, but I'd like to acknowledge Ms. Sequoia Bacon, who's come to support me today. Thank you for coming. Gloria, my sister, and Cynthia. Lisa, you know, you know, Lisa's my sister, Gage. You know, she may be an in-law, but she ain't an in-law. All my family and friends, thank you for being here. Like I said, last year, oh, well, like I said, this month has been all, I guess, in-house guest speakers. And how's guest speakers in? Minister Anderson came and he talked about um, uh, a fox in the hen house. Mm -hmm. Powerful message. And, 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 and Elder Hawkins last week asked us, what position yeah. are you willing to take? Yeah. Now, I, I'm, 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 I'm fairly new to this, to this preaching, so y'all don't have I don't, I don't really have a, a, a title for a subject or whatever, okay? But, but if, 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 if I had to venture, uh -huh. <laughs> if I had to bench, if I had to step out a little bit, I would, I would, I would ask you about this. How about this? check your dash? That's, that's a little catch. I like that. So check it. And, and, and it, it's gonna come to light in a minute. But check your dash. Okay. Okay. Check your dash. Like I said, last year was rough for us. Last year was was, was extremely rough, and and. and and I'm not going to spend a long time talking about it because, like I said, it was a bad time. A lot of bad times um, last year. Um, my daughter had been going through some things. And, 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 and she had been suffering. Suffering. And, and when I say suffering, she had been suffering. She had, been gone. She had, she had, she had pain that wrapped her so hard that she would, have, would, she would literally have to scream because it was, it was painful and, and she was going through something. It would be suddenly, it would be intense and and, uh, and we went from doctor to doctor. We went up and down the East Coast trying to figure out what was going on. Right? And, and finally, this one doc um, decided that, you know what, we're going to find out right now what's going on. And we went to, went down to Stafford, Virginia 
um, and they did some exploratory surgery, and the doc came back and said that my little girl um, is suffering from Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease. And I'm not going to get into what Crohn's is right now. Just understand that when you have a flare-up, it's the most intense pain that you can suffer, that you can, that you, that a little, that no child should have to go through that, right? And it was, it was, it was, we was, and, and, and I'm going to get a little cheery up for a second, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. Um, so the doc comes and tells, brings us out into the waiting room out there, staff at the hospital, and says, hey, look, the little girl is, is, is suffering from Crohn's disease, and um, we're going to forward the, the, the results to the children's hospital. Um, but it's going to, you're going to go through some rough times. Um, and you know they offer counseling and all kinds of stuff, right? And I told her, say, you know what, well, we'll we, we, we'll deal with that. And um, we 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 have counseling we have. We, we come down to it. So I pick up the phone, and you know what we do? We always call Sasha. Call that call down. I want to talk to my mom um, because this, you know, like the, like that song. I think it was Helen Bella. Uh, so she has a praying grandma, right? Like right. a quantum work has a praying grandma. And she could get a prayer through as strong as anybody I know. And she was the first person I thought of to call. And I always knew that her grandfather, my father, had a word. He kept a word. It's like he had it in his pocket. And he always had the right one. Right? He always had the right one. So I wanted, I needed some encouragement. I was going through it. It was awesome. So I pick up the phone. Sitting right there in the weight room, um, Mill goes back inside to talk to Quasma, and and I get my mother on her cell phone, which is impossible. She don't ever answer her cell phone. And the fact that she answered her cell phone, I said to myself, "Well, that ain't nothing but God. I'm gonna be okay." She answered her cell phone, I'm gonna be okay. Um, so she answers the cell phone, and and. She was going, she was telling me that she was about to pick it up to call me. Uh, she was going to call me because she was at the hospital. She was at the hospital down in Tooney, down in Southern South Carolina. And the doc had just told them that my father um, stage four cancer in his pain. Um, there was no surgery or anything to do for him. Um, um, it was a bad day. That day was bad. I sat in, a, in, a, in. I never did tell my mother about my father. We ended up sitting there crying on the telephone together. Right we ended up encouraging one another. And after we got done, you know, because the initial shock is hard on me. I understand. You know, we say we understand that God's will is going to be done, but but pain is pain. Pain is pain. We were going through. Some things right then, but when we got finished talking, we were sitting there, we were sitting there praising the Lord through our tears. Amen. We were up there thanking God, and, and, and eventually I called her back and told her about quantum. But you want to know something? We, we 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 had already decided that we were going to trust God for healing, and we're going to get through this thing. We're going to get through this thing. Um, so from there, we're going back to Fort South Carolina, deal with my father up here in Maryland, deal with quantum. You know, Quasima went from, we took her, she went to school on the 28th of February, 2014, right, when she, when the pain grabbed her. And the pain was so intense she couldn't go back to school. The next time she stepped foot in a classroom at the schoolhouse was January 6, 2015. She went, she, she didn't go back to school, she couldn't make it to school. With that being said, she didn't miss a test. Wow. She didn't miss a homework assignment. <laughs> Look at God. She didn't miss the honor. Wow. It's a testament to her, to God, to her mother yes. for pulling her for, for getting her through that thing. Right? My father eventually. He succumbed to, to cancer. He passed September 25th. Okay? September 25th of September, my father passed. We go down there for the funeral. And if I haven't thanked you all, Bishop, 
Deacon Smith, Trina, Bob, everybody who, Sister Martin, Sister Tom, Mother Thompson, all Brother Howard, Mother Vincent, Melvin, I can just keep going down the list. All the people, Mother Mark, who went down to South Carolina and supported my family. You all understand the love I feel right here for you all. And that the church has been so good to me. That God is present here. Okay? And, and I thank God for each and every one of you. And, and I could just stand here all day and talk about that. And talk about that. In fact, that's part of my message. That's part of my message. And I wanted to, it, 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 it's, it's just been a blessing coming here. All right? And, 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 but life happens. Like happens, and we understand that like happens. We understand that you go from one thing into the next thing, and into the next thing, into the next thing. And, and I spent last week, um, uh, my aunt passed down in um, Georgia. We went down there for the homeborn service for my aunt, Marlene. And, and uh, again, it was sad. It was sad because when you lose a body on the on the on this earth, you lose a body, you lose a friend. And you and you miss your friends, so you so that's sad. But while he was saved, okay, was saved. And we was and we was at the church in down in Augusta, Georgia, and this young man preached. Man, did he preach? He was at a funeral and a church service broke out. I'm talking about a, 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 a revival, the likes of which I haven't seen since back in the day when we had three or four day night revivals. Oh, Jesus, that's a whole one. And and. and, and and here, it, 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 and now Bishop had called me weeks ago, asked me to speak today, and, and I had um, consulted the Lord for my message, and I had it written down, and I was ready to go. But this dude preached. Yeah, I'm telling you, I really came, it was cool to change it up. I want to switch up. I'm like, I wish I could convey to my church, to my family, what he said to us. And, 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 and me and this young man had a lot of time. I wrote it down, I, I, I made notes, I said, uh, he and I had a lot of time. <laughs> like me, he was, he was from Washington, D.C. He was born right here in Washington, D.C. And like mine, his last name is James. We both served in the military, and both, and, but the most important thing, we both proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. That's right. We both are willing to stand on the word, and folks know that we say when we deal with it. You know, when, when, when I'm at work, when I'm at work, uh, when I walk in a room, people <coughs> change their behavior. Because they don't want to offend the man of God. And I'm just That's a, a blessing. Right? When, when, um, That's a blessing. You know, they understand that when Sergeant James comes in the room, there will be no person here. You know what I'm when I walk in the room, we're not gonna, there's not gonna be no back talk, we're not gonna talk about nobody's mama, we're not gonna talk about drinking, none of the other stuff. Because you know, because there are certain things that we just ain't gonna do when I'm around. Right? And, and for folks and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the people who are unaware, you know, because there's stuff there's so you know, you know everybody don't understand the rules. You know, you know, you know the norms and the morals are going on. The the old heads will tell them now, so we're gonna do that around something. Don't do that right. You respect him. You don't respect me. They respect the God in you. Right. Respect God in you. If you show God, people are going to act God. Okay? Right? So, 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 we, we're going to get into this um, because that gets, that's, that's the, that he talked about the three things that are on almost all tombstones. He talked about the birthday. You know, the first date on the tombstone was the birthday. And the last one. And another thing on the tombstone is the date of the demise, the day the person passed. And then and they got these big, in most tombstones, they got big pretty letters and calligraphy, underlined, italicized, and it's, and it's in, engraved and imprinted, and it's going to be there for as long as the tombstone stands, for the most part. But the most important thing on the tombstone, right, the most important thing is not the date the person was born. Because you can't control that. You're going to be born when you get born. It's not going to be 
the date the person passed away because you can't control that even for the most part. A lot of times people die at a most inconvenient time. You don't really pick that. The most important thing important to this preacher on the tombstone is that little dash in between. Right? Some tombstones is almost can't even see. Sometimes it's a dot, sometimes it's a little squiggly line. And it went and when it fade and the first thing to fade away is probably that little dash. It's insignificant when you look at it from a tombstone. But if you step back, you, you step back and you and you consider the dash. The dash represents your life. Right? The dash represents that thing that you do to get you where you're gonna be at the time of your past. Okay? If you if 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 if, if your dash is right, if your dash is right, then you'll go up. You'll go to hell. But woe be unto you if your dash is wrong. Lord Jesus. If you, if you can do me a favor, do me a favor, check your dash. Right? Somebody look at your neighbor, tell them to check your dash. Now, as we read earlier, the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes that it's better to do something with a friend, right? It's better to do something with a friend than to try to accomplish this thing alone. Okay? Now, 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 when I was here before, when I was here before, those of you who was here or you saw it on YouTube, and those of you who checked out the YouTube phrase, God bless you, thank you. The church needs the hits. We talked about love. We talked about love. And we talked about the three types of love as described by the Greeks. Right? You have the 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 Eros love. The Eros love is a physical love. And that that's for married folks. So we'll talk about that in the fifth when the married couples meet at my house. All right, okay. Um, well, but we, we talked about um, agape, love of your fellow man. All right, agape love is a type of love that Sister Marriage show the man who was on the side of the road who got a butt kicked and he stole his stuff and the Samaritan picked him up, took him to the, to the end, dropped off some money, paid for it. That's, 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 that's the love that we have for our fellow man. The love that we showed yesterday when we passed out those baskets for those people who need it food and, and dinner for Thanksgiving, that's agape love. The church is, the, the, the God has said that the church and the church people are required to show agape love. Agape love is a charitable love. A love, a love that surpasses your understanding to do it. In other words, even if you don't understand why we do it, you got to do it. Right? You don't have to know why you do this thing in order to in order to do it. That's what you, that's our requirement. We are required to love. That's love for your fellow man. That's a copy love. Today, we're gonna to talk about the feelings. That brotherly love. Love for your brother. In other words, love for the person that you have a relationship with. People who you know. Right? We're gonna talk about that type of love. We're gonna talk about a couple other things, but but that's that, that that's what brings us to the dash. Okay? Because if you're not doing it within the word of God, then you're going to be in trouble. You're in trouble. When you're in trouble, and the person to whom you are supposed to show your love to may get destroyed. May get destroyed. You don't want that on your, on your plate. Those of us who are, well, child of God. Are you child of God? Yeah, yeah, I'm talking to you. That's right. Right? Because, because you're the ones who are required to do this. And those people who aren't children of God, you need to get right because you're dashing right. Okay? All right? Now, friends. Now, there's been songs written about friends, secular and gospel. Right? But friends, and, and I've done a lot of research, I've looked at the Bible, I've consulted the Bible, I've consulted counseling, textbooks. I've, I, you know, I, I, I looked around and, I, and it, I've determined. A good definition for friends. Friends are two or more people who mutually share a genuine fondness for each other. Okay? In other words, just because I like you, don't make us friends. You have to like me too. Alright? Alright? Just because me and Trina, you know, I like Trina, she's cool. But if Trina don't care about me, then we ain't friends. 
He's just somebody I like. Okay? It has to be mutual. It has to go back and forth. And, A and D, not or, or R. You need that. That's the first thing you need. The second thing you need in order to be friends, you have to have a mutual belief in the willingness to sacrifice a significant personal loss for the betterment of the other person. Okay? Okay? In other words, for a friend, you gotta be willing to do something that that person needs. When that person falls down, you gotta be willing to bend down to pick them up. When that person's about to get put out their house, about to put, get put out their house, you have to be willing to go into debt to help that person. Right? Now, when I, now, I'm not telling you that you have to go into debt, but you have to have that willingness. You have to think to yourself, you know what, you gotta think to do it before you think not to. Okay? Because a friend from the other side wouldn't call another friend to be damaged, irreparable, in order for them to survive. See, this thing, this friend thing goes both ways. Right? Just because I'm willing to help you at my, at, at, at my sacrifice, you need to be willing to suffer your own self so that I don't kill myself helping you. Right? Is that that's what that's that, that this friend thing is a sliding scale. It's, 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 it goes up and down, and and we need to recognize this. See, when we go to when we choose our friends, we need to understand that friends, you know, that's 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 a complicated thing, right? And you just can't say this person's my friend because I like this person. You can't just say this friend is, is, is my friend because this person is willing to do this or that for me, right? It's, 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 it's a mutual thing, and you have to have a fondness for one another, and you have to have a willingness to help that person, even to your own detriment. Yes. Now the body, because we're gonna stay in the world, right? The Bible refers to friends in Ecclesiastes as fellows. You know, they, you know, when you see the word fellows, they're talking about friends. In Proverbs, friends are called neighbors. In the New Testament, especially for John, when Paul is speaking, he refers to the word friends as the lust. Okay? The Bible also uses the word friends throughout and advises us on certain important characteristics required by friends in order to be friends. Right? In other words, if you're going to be a friend, a saved friend, there are certain things you have to be willing to do in order to maintain that title of friendship. Right? Ecclesiastes 4 and 10 requires us to pick up our friend when he or she have, have fallen. Proverbs 18 and 24 provides that in order to have friends, one must show himself to be friendly. Right? Proverbs 17 and 17 requires friends to love one another. You have to have love. We always fall back on love. Love is always present. Right? Proverbs 27 and 9 and also in verse 17 requires us to mentor each other. It takes a friend to teach a friend. Right? It takes a friend to teach a friend. Right? If you have a person who, 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 who is in need of mentoring and they are your friend, you are required by the law of God to, to set them straight, to give them right, to rebuke and to reprove as friends are. It's better to hear reproof or rebuke from a friend than a compliment from somebody that doesn't like it. Now that's good. Okay? All right? It's better for me to come to you and say, you know something, man, you, you may want to take a shot. Then for somebody who don't walk, who don't like you to walk up to you and say, man, you smell good. Which one is better? Because if you stink, you stink. Right? And if you don't know it, then you don't know. Right? Good friends act within the will of God. That's another thing. You gotta act within the will of God. God has placed people in our lives who help us. Likewise, whether we realize it or not, whether or not you want to accept it or not, you have been placed in certain other people's lives to help them. Okay? And, 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 and if your friend uses you for their betterment, that's your job. That's your job. That's why God has granted us the ability to forgive. Right. You have to say, you have, you know, you know, sometimes, oftentimes, it takes a friend to hurt you. You know, if an enemy misses you, misuses you, you don't care. You don't care, right? 
If a friend misuses you, that hurts us to our heart. That's still hot. And some of us go years. I've seen it. Christians, pastors, don't so want to talk to them for years because they felt slighted. But if you read the word, the word says a friend is there to be used by your friend for their betterment to your detriment sometimes. And if that's the case, then it's your job to offer forgiveness. You know, to give forgiveness. Right? In fact, forgiveness is required. Right? If you have an order against your brother and you die, your dash ain't right. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. That's all it says. That dash is little. But you better check it. Okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about a couple friends. We're talking about a couple of friends now. Now the Bible is full of the book is full of friends. We, we can talk about uh, Ruth and Naomi. We can talk about Paul and Barnabas. We can talk about Paul and Ananias. I wanted to talk about Paul and Ananias. Me and um, Minister Hawk Mount um, Anderson sat in the back right there and talked about two hours about um, Saul slash Paul and Ananias about and, and how that came to be, but. Um, um, like I said, you got to be with the Word of God, and in my research, God kept sending me to David and Jonathan. All right? David and Jonathan, according to, according to Scripture, there are no closer friends. There are no closer friends. Uh, it says, we, 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 we're going to, we're going to, we're going to, uh, 1 Samuel 18th chapter, it says that the friendship was established in the first verse. We're going to read this. We're, gonna, uh, we're just going to read the first verse. I'm going to read the whole thing, but um, anybody know anything about 1 Samuel? Samuel is wrong. And it came to pass when he made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Right? Right? Now, now anybody who knows the story of Jonathan and David, you know, knows that um, one, of course, they were, they were good friends. Um, but to be honest, it's unlikely. It was unlikely for these two guys to be friends. To be honest. Um, Jonathan uh, was the son of King Saul. David was the young son of a shepherd. Jonathan was an accomplished warrior. He was an accomplished warrior, and he had the respect of other warriors. Okay, and when I say accomplished warrior, Jonathan was a bad dude. He was a bad dude. The Bible says that Jonathan, Jonathan took the garrison at mismatch. Mismatch. Right, I had to read that three times. Um, he, he, he said he stormed the garrison of Philistines. Just him and his armor bearer. They said, the Bible said he took the first 24. 24 dudes, 24 warriors. Philistine warriors, no big deal, right? Jonathan knocked them down. The armor bearers stuck him with the sword, killed him. 24, 24 of them. But that's just the first way. It describes the rest of the dudes that was there in acreage. It didn't say it was another 20 or 30 men. It said it had a half acre of warriors as the ox plows. That's a lot of folks. <laughs> this right here, this is about what? A tenth of an acre, maybe? Maybe even less than that. So we had five times as many dudes if the church was full coming at this coming at this man and he won. Walked away. Jonathan was a bad dude. Now David killed a lot. Now that's not that's not a small feat. Not by any me by any measure of the of, uh, by any measure. But Jonathan had a reputation for fighting for the name of the Lord, right? Now, Jonathan and David, they didn't hang out in the same places. They didn't hang out with the same people. It was more likely that they would have never met than it would have been for them to become friends. Somebody say, but God. But God. Because God needed Jonathan to befriend David so that David could go do what David needed to do, right? right? We don't know the plan God has for us. Right? But if you act within the will of God, if you act within the will of God, his plan will be made clear. It will be made plain. Now, Jonathan was a son of Saul. Right? 
Saul and David, they, you know, they, they, they fell out with one another. Yeah. They fell out with one another. Saul wanted to kill him. I mean, uh -huh. there is no more falling out than I want to put a spear in your chest. Right? right? Yeah, that's not friendly. I'm, I'm trying to think of how you can't get no further away than that. Yeah, that's not friendly. Jonathan warned David. David was able to get away and escape and go on and do the things that David did. Yeah. Right? Because Jonathan acted within the will of God concerning the love he had for his friend. Right? Jonathan acted with his will. Now imagine if Jonathan had been hard, had done some things that he wasn't supposed to do, and acted outside the will of God. All right? Now, now, now we're gonna go a little bit off, off beat. Off, off, off beat. Jonathan acted within the will of God. Has anybody here seen the color purple? You seen the color purple? You seen the color purple? Remember Harpo? Remember Harpo? Harpo was having problems with his wife, Sophia. Yeah. Right? Right? She was having a problem. She wouldn't do nothing Harper wanted her to do. She wouldn't do nothing so Harper, so Harpo goes to Miss Seely. He goes to Miss Seely and say, What can I do with her, Miss Seely? I mean, his voice was all high. Harpo was, Harpo was a beaten man. Miss Seely, I can't do nothing with her. What, what, what can I do? Now, Miss Seely, Miss Seely, According to the story, the story, she was, you know, she was a counselor. She told Harpo, um, um, let's pray for her. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh -uh. Okay. Oh, no, no, you're right. He said, he said, you know what? He said, he said, yeah, he said, beat her. He said, you need to whip her tail. That was, that was, that was, that was, right? Right? Now, how did that work out for The Bible says, because like I said, we're going to stay in the Word. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, chapter 20, verse, He that walketh with wise shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. And she destroyed Harper's face, didn't she? Everybody walking around with black eyes. <laughs> Because C was being a friend. Because the friend offered compassion. He went, he, he went to her for advice. He was falling down. She lifted him up. But she acted outside the will of God. If you act outside the will of God, there will be destruction. You're going to have problems. You're going to, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle. Now, now that's that like now that's 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 a movie and it's and it's all fun and, and, and it's nice to laugh a little bit. But 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 let's talk about three other dudes. Let's talk about three other dudes. Let's talk about a, couple, a, a guy named Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zephar. And Zephar. Is that Z O P H A R? And I'm not talking about that that blue dude in the Disney cartoon. Zephar. That's Zephar. Zephar. Well, yeah, it was Zephar. All right. Now, Joe. You may have heard of a guy named Joe. Yeah, Job. Job had fallen on hard times. Job had fallen on hard times. Can you imagine Job's testimony? I can give honor to God and the bishop and all the saints. And um, I thank the Lord for my life, health, and strength. Um, but church, I got a story to tell. I got, I got a story. There was a time when I was the richest man in all the land. I was. I had my health, I had my strength, I had a bunch of kids. I, I had a lot of livestock, more livestock than anybody. I had the greenest vegetables, and I, it, I, it, I, was, I was the man. I was the man, and I had the favor of God. And then I had nothing. Right? Uh, it says that Job was rich by any measurement. He had more livestock than anyone. His crops were the most plentiful. He had a lot of children, and he was married happily. But there's something else. Um, oh yeah, in verse one, I mean, in chapter one, verse eight, God endorsed him 
as being upright and perfect. Yeah. That's not a small thing. Now, if Samuel or Elijah or Elisha or Moses or even Joshua had said that said that Job was a good dude, that would have been worthy of putting in the Bible. But if God says you're perfect and upright, man, that's next level. I mean, he's the only one that I could find that God ever said that. So you got God, Jesus Christ, Job. And that's the list. That's it. <laughs> All right? That's the list. It, 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 it is amazing when I read that. Every time you read that, when, when God said, I consider my servant Job, I find him to be perfect and upright. Okay? Now, on my job, I write evaluations. I got about 100 officers. 100 officers. 100 officers. And I've been writing evaluations for about 10 years. Years. Not a single time have I said perfect. <laughs> Not once. I haven't, and I've had some great offers. I haven't, I haven't typed the word perfect on anything. And I've been on that job 20 something years. And and God picked them up and said, hey, Job is perfect. That's an amazing thing. Okay? And Job was perfect, so Job deserved the stuff that he had. I'm not saying that Job didn't do it. No, I, I, I was having a little bit of fun there, but Job, Job was perfect and upright and had the favor of God, and Job talked to God, and God talked to Job. Okay? Job fell on hard times, and Job didn't know why he was falling on hard times. We, it, 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 um, the story of Job is, 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 is a sermon for another time, but, but suffice it to say that Job fell on hard times. Okay? And his friends, Eliphaz, Bildad, uh -huh. And Zephar yeah. traveled to come see him. That's right. right? They traveled to come see him. In the second chapter, at the, at the 11th verse, it says that now Job's three friends heard of this evil that had come upon him. Now, Job, when I say Job was fallen on a bad time, Job, who had more livestock than anybody, lost all his livestock. Uh -huh. right. Job, who had, more, had the most plentiful fields. All dry. Job, who had a lot of children, all his kids didn't die. I mean, all, all his kids died, right? And Job, who was happily married, had a wife that did him dirty. Right? Now I don't know that that did me dirty part. I was a fool. That would have that part would have definitely pushed me over the edge. Okay? Uh, but not Job. No, Job was like. I'm gonna wait till my time. I'm gonna wait for my, my I'm gonna wait for my change. Job stood fast. Job stood strong. Lord, Lord. Right? But these three friends traveled to comfort Job in his time of need. When they did that, they were following scripture. They were attempting to uplift a friend who had fallen. But like Seely, they stepped outside the word of God. And they foolishly but replaced God's will with their wrong understanding. Uh, okay? Now, now, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Sephar believe that righteous people don't suffer. They say if you're righteous, you don't suffer. And if you do suffer, then you can't be righteous. You can't get, they, for the life of them, they couldn't, they couldn't coexist. Now, and we're not talking about, about, about non-Christians. We're not talking about people who were babes in the faith. We're talking about guys who were leaders, leaders in their sect. The places where they came from, they were in charge. It was their job to advise the elders on the way of God. And they talked to God. Now, we're not talking about guys who didn't have a relationship or a conversation with the Almighty. These guys talked to God, and God talked to them. Okay? But because God's ways are a mystery to us, they didn't understand that part either. They thought they knew just because they, they because they were able to talk to God. They thought they knew what God wanted. They thought they knew how God acted. Right? They thought they knew that God, but but we understand that God is God. And if God chooses to do something, then it's right because God did. Right? If God says, you know what? 
Tomorrow, 2 plus 2 is 5, then guess what? 2 plus 2 is 5. That's just, that's just how it's going to be. Because he's God. And above him, there is no other. There is no physical law. And, uh, 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 there's no, there's no, 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 no man-made law. There's nothing that's above God. How many people have seen people come back from the dead? That ain't nothing but God. Right? We've, we've, if you've been in this church for any amount of time, you have seen people healed. Yes. That's, That's against miracles. laws of nature. Yes. It can only be God. Yes. Okay? Amen. Yes. So these guys, while they knew God, they didn't know God. They didn't know God. They didn't have an understanding for God. And when God, and when Job was going through, when he was going through, they decided that it was Job's fault. And they told him. And they told him. And Job 7 and 9, Eliphaz said that the wicked suffer according to the measurement of his sin. In other words, Job's suffering is proportionate to the amount of sin in his life. Now, we're talking about Job. Job. And I already told you that God said that Job was perfect. Right? Where there is sin, there is no God. Right? Job can't be perfect if he's in sin. Right? And Job 8, Bill Dad advised Job to stop whatever it is he's doing. You're messing up, Job. You're messing up. You need to stop it. Because you need to stop it and seek the Lord. Bill Dad chastised Job, chastised Job saying that God does not allow righteous men to suffer. And if Job was suffering so much, then Job must not be right. Now we're talking about a perfect and upright guy. Right, who's been accused of not being righteous by a man. When God has said, you are perfect. Right? And in Job 11, Zephar said that Job was a vain man. Void of understanding and full of iniquity. Right? And these were Job's friends. <laughs> right? These were Job's friends. But they were acting outside the word of God. Now, Job was perfect in the eyesight of God. And Job was perfect in the eyesight of God. So Job overcame this. Right? But it took Job. Somebody like Job to overcome it. The people who we deal with, they ain't Job. The people who, who we call friends aren't as strong as Job. They may not be as strong as you. Right? And if you and if you your job as a friend when a person is down is to encourage them, to put them in a position where they can overcome whatever it is they're going through. Your job is to pick them up, to, 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 to be there. Now, now, from time to time, our job is to reproof them. But we reproof and rebuke with our, with our mind towards what God would want them to be on the other side. Okay? You don't walk up to a guy who, you don't walk, I, I'm not going to walk up to Bishop Vincent and say, man, you are. I can't even say for you. That don't even sound like coming out of my mouth talking about it. Right? And we're talking about Job. They walked to Job who they knew was upright in the eyesight of God. And they, it, that, that's because they stepped out of God's will and they replaced it with their own vain, own selfishness. And they wanted, and, 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 and you know, I don't even know what they wanted. I do know that they were wrong. I do know that they were wrong. And I know that Job recovered. And this is here. So that, to let us know that when we're dealing with us as Christians, as people of the faith, as counselors, when you're praying for folks, be careful what you tell us. Be careful what you tell them. Be careful because the person, the person, you may be more of a detriment for them than a help. Okay? We need to be mindful of that. Right? And when you act outside the will of God, God gets upset. God gets upset. Like I said, God. These people talk to God. These people talk to God. And Job 42 and 7, God, you know, he, he came down and he spoke with Eliphaz. He said, and it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz, he told Eliphaz he was happy with him. The Lord said to Eliphaz, the Temanite, my wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends. 
Now they get, God already separated them from Job. You ain't even Job's friend. You see? He said, For ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right. And my as my Job, as my servant Job hath. Now we read somewhere, and I and I don't have it for me, but uh, it says, uh, touch my touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. That sounds a whole lot like there's a consequence if you do. Amen. Right? Can you imagine God being mad at you? I mean, think about it. Think about it. You know, right now my kids are back there thinking, I don't ever want dad to be mad. Right? I ain't God. God will God let them know that you need to do right. You need to do right. You need to act within the will of God. You need to act within the will of God. You need to be a good friend when we are friends. Okay? And, and, and I'm about to close. I'm going to come to my close. All right? But we're going to do a quick review so, we, so that we understand what we, what we are. Okay? First, we need to check our dad. We need to make sure we're, we're living right. We need to make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to do so that we can make it to heaven. All right? So check your dad. Two, friends are two or more people who mutually share a genuine fondness for each other and mutually believe that they are willing to sacrifice a significant personal loss for the betterment of the other friend. All right? So you got to be willing to give something up if your friend needs it. Right? But you also got to understand if you're the person who needs it, that the person is sacrificing. Right? It's a mutual thing that goes back and forth. All right? Number three. The Bible requires certain, certain characteristics of believers in order to be considered a friend. All right? You must show yourself friends. You have to be friends. You must lift up your friend when he or she is down. Helping your friend is his own reward. Let me say that again. Helping your friend is his own reward. All right. There is no need for further compensation, nor is there a reason to expect. It. If you're going to help somebody else, you need to help them out. That's your job. That's your job. And the fact that they overcome is his own reward. Okay? You must mentor your friend, and just as, poor, just as importantly, you must be open to being mentored. In other words, if somebody is, needed, is in need of, of, of training, you need to train. But you also need to realize that sometimes you don't know everything. Sometimes you need to submit yourself to someone so that you can be taught. Okay? How else can one learn unless they be taught? And how can one be taught without a teacher? Very important, you must love each other. Love. Love. Everything has to be based in love. Everything has to be love. And love suffers wrong. Okay? Alright? Four last. Destruction occurs when you conject yourselves outside the will of God. Okay? So whatever you do, you make sure you do it within the will of God. Please stand. Now, I've spoken for a while about friendship and what it takes to be a friend. I've talked about, I've talked about, um, the things you need to do and acting within the will of God. But let me, let, let me introduce you to a friend of mine. Jesus Christ came and he walked along the earth. He showed us, he told, he, 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 he he gave us a plan for salvation. He put us in a position so that we can live eternally in heaven. All we have to do is accept him as our Lord and Savior. We have to acknowledge that we have sinned. We have to acknowledge that we want to do right. That we want to, want to, want to live holy and be right. Okay? Now is our opportunity to correct our dash. If it's messed up. Is there anyone, anyone, like to come down for who think that who, 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 who would like to get their lives in? Who want to who want to accept the Lord, want to be saved, want to find, want to make heaven their home. Is anyone in need of prayer? 
or encouragement. We want to anyone. We want to come down for a word of encouragement. Oh, 